hey everybody welcome back to another business analysis video today's video is a very different one a very different one from business analysis knowledge um i want to talk to you about taking control of your personal finances as a business analyst you know the business analyst job one of the key positives or points of this career path is is a rewarding career with regards to finances finances a salary it pays really well is what i'm trying to say as much as you possibly ha have high earning potential what are you planning to use the money for this is what i want to talk about um, because as workers as career people not just as business analysts generally as career people we don't live to work that's not the reason for us to be alive Right? We work to live. We work to earn, to make earnings, to make money so that we can live and enjoy the fruits of our labor, enjoy our hobbies, enjoy our families, spend money on things that are important to us. Again, coming back to it, I want you to remember your why. Why are you looking to become a business analyst? In my old, old beginning videos of business analysts, I think I was very open and honest with you about why I went into business analysis. Initially, I had no idea what business analysis was about, but my ears were ringing when somebody said <laughs> the potential of earning is very high. Without even knowing what business analysis is, I was like, yeah, this is my career. This is it, <laughs> right? Um, why is that? Because I had reasons that, that I had things that I wanted to use money for, right? That's why I said, know your why and the things that you, the environment that you find yourself in will help you to reach your why. Because I knew my why, my whys which were, I want to buy a house in the next whatever years I had at that time. I want to, and not just a normal random house, a house with a big garden, right? I want to own a car. I want to pay off my debts. I want to save up for my son's university so he doesn't have to go into student loans, all those things. I want to travel four to five times a year, <laughs> right? How can I do these things? I have to work. You have to make money. And business analysis was that avenue for me to make the money that I, I can now use <laughs> for my why. But sometimes you find yourself in situations where you have your why but what is presented to you is not something that you think that you will enjoy. It's not something that you feel that you have the experiences, the knowledge about. This is why I share knowledge about business analysis on YouTube because you might not have the education. You might not know, like me when I started, you might not know anything about business analysis. And then you might have that fear and worry um, that you need to have coding knowledge. You need to have, you need to be a techie. It's, I'm not saying that business analysis is the easiest job or career to get into, but it's one of the easiest way to get into IT without really being a techie person or a software engineer type person. Yes, I'm digressing a little bit because I'm making a point and I'm coming back to what I want to say, right? When I started out, I always talk about in, not always, but I've, I think I've mentioned in a few of my videos past that I was quite reserved, I was quite shy. Um, I had fear of authority amongst a lot of other, other things. Um, and once I became a business analyst, I had imposter syndrome, right? Because I felt like, I don't deserve to be here. I, do, I don't deserve to be earning this type of salary. Like, who am I? <laughs> right? And also, I wasn't sure that I enjoyed business analysis. Even though I did the course, and remember I said my ears were ringing because I just heard <laughs> the salary and I said to myself, no matter what, I'll make myself love this career because this is it for me right that's just what I told myself even though I knew that I wasn't really I wouldn't say I wasn't a people person I just didn't like new environments right I didn't like meeting new people and doing all the introduction and try to understand not to talk of then being in a, a formal setting where I need to know how to speak in a formal way know how to manage stakeholders it just was a bit draining <laughs> for the type of personality that I had um, so being open and honest I didn't really think business analysis was for me to be honest it wasn't for me but if you find yourself in an environment where you're constantly 
having to challenge yourself, uh, when you're also constantly being presented with challenging situations. Going back to your why, right? For me, I went back to my why. Like when I felt like hmm, I can't do this, like there's a difficult stakeholder that's making me cry or there are some situations where I don't really understand what they're talking about and I'm feeling very overwhelmed. And I said to myself, you know, this is not it for me. But what other avenues are available? For me to make my why <laughs> become real and at that point in my life there really wasn't any other avenue at the time because i had a time frame and i just wanted to meet that i feel like i'm, I'm talking too much and i hope i'm not boring you guys but i'm trying to sort of i don't know maybe motivate or inspire you to keep going no matter what environment you find yourself in in that time remember that this too shall pass Whatever it is you are experiencing, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, is what I'm saying. It didn't kill me at that time. And I kept on going back to work every day, having this fear and this anxiety in my heart. Like, what challenges are there for me today in the office when I go to the office, right? Um, um, but yeah, I just wanted to share that with you that I relate. I relate. I feel you. Uh, I know that you have the fear, but you can't just sit and wallow in your fear. And now I'm not only talking about people that are aspiring to become business analysts, whatever career it is that you're looking at, even if it's non-career, whatever it is that you're challenged with, know that it's that feeling, that anxiety, it will pass. And tomorrow will come. The sun will shine, right? The sun will still shine and you'll tackle the day if you keep remembering and knowing what your why is well, anyway in conclusion <laughs> with my story and my uh waffling on um as much as at the start i felt like this is just a stepping stone for me to sort of explore a different area and when i finish exploring it i'm out <laughs> right um because i continuously face those challenges those experiencing is experiences it started to build me as an individual right and I started to have more confidence I'm so confident in myself in my delivery in my work and around people as well it's like when I think about talking to myself in <laughs> 10 years ago it's like my 10 years ago self won't believe where I am now because I never saw myself being here like who the hell do I think I am <laughs> To be in a room with board of directors and C-level people and speaking and controlling the room. Like, who the hell do I think I am? But continuously facing those challenges has really built me and um, made me who I am today, really. To the point that business analysis is like my bread and butter. I eat and sleep business analysis. And I, I can't think of any other career path. I'm, I'm happy with this. And I know that business analysis is a toolkit of services that we provide to the organization. So the role is not just about the job title business analyst, it's about the service that we bring in regards to business analysis. So as much as I know that the business analyst role can change, the job title can change, I, I have a wealth of knowledge and experience that I can bring to other types of job titles, you know what I mean? But in fact, what I'm trying to say is, if you don't love something, not for you, <laughs> maybe for me, for me, in essence, what I'm trying to say is at the start, I didn't love business analysis, but thinking and waking up and knowing that this is a career path that has high earning potential, my love for my why, my love for that high earning, for that salary coming to my account every month is what kept me going it's like ah if you want to earn thousands of pounds every month you better love this job you better love it if you want to continue earning thousands of pounds per month and you're not a good communicator you better learn <laughs> to be a good communicator you better learn how to handle difficult stakeholders so in learning i've reached the stage of my career where i actually, I actually love what i do um, otherwise I wouldn't be teaching it, right? Um, coming back <laughs> to today's topic where I want to talk about the finances, the money that we earn, not just as business analysts, but generally, I kind of want to share a little bit of finance tips on how to manage your personal finances. Even if you're not yet a business analyst, even if you're on low earnings, obviously you want to be at a stage where you're saving for your why. Save for your why. So I'm going to go ahead 
and open an Excel sheet so that I teach you sort of what I did at the start, even before I became a business analyst, the things that I did in Excel so that I'm able to track my earnings, track my expenses, because I had a why of how much I want to be saving every month, how much I want to save every year. But what's my reason for saving? It's not just for the sake of saving. I'm saving it for a particular reason so that I'm able to also control my mindset so I don't spend this money. <laughs> I'm saving for my reason. So really, take control of your personal finances. We as business analysts, we have tapped into this career of high earning potential. But again, the big question still remains, what do we do with the money that we're earning, right? Let's go ahead and I'm going to share these financial tips that can help you take control of your personal finances. So let's make our money work for us, not the other way around. Let's not work for our money, let's make the money work for us. Let's have a look at our income with the same analytical lens that we use at our jobs as business analysts. Firstly, are you maximizing your earning potential? Negotiating salaries, considering side projects and ensuring that you're being paid your worth. That's your step one, okay? You don't want to leave any money on the table. Now, secondly, you want to create a budget of that money that you are earning. I know it might sound basic, but creating a budget is really like drafting a project scope. It defines where your resources should go. You want to track your spending. You want to categorize your expenses. You want to set financial boundaries. It's very important. Remember, a budget doesn't limit you. It empowers you. I feel empowered when I have a budget. So after budgeting, let's apply a business analysis or business analyst approach to saving. Just as we analyze data trends, you want to analyze your savings habits. You want to establish your clear savings goal, whether it's for an emergency, whether it's for a big purchase, whether it's for retirement. You want to automate your savings and watch your financial security grow. Now let's look at this budgeting tool that I'm going to create on Excel. At the same time, think about your approach to saving as well as automating your savings because you don't automate it. Every month when your salary comes in, all your money is going to finish and you don't know where it's gone to. So I'm going to record the screen now. I've got a screen and I'm sort of doing um, a sort of Excel quick tutorial as well. So when you open Excel, obviously this is what comes up. This is going to be a long video, um, I, but I, I hope that I'm adding some sort of value for you guys. Hopefully not more than 30 minutes. Um, what months are in the year? January to February. Ne <laughs> January to December. But what I do is on my personal one, I'm creating this. I put um, Feb on there and then I put Feb slash March and so on and so forth okay and i'm going to put march slash april let's just do it for three months but obviously you want to do it for the whole year okay so we have our 12 months of the year i've identified my months um of the year but the reason why i put them in slashes is because i'm going to highlight this um just use a blue one or whatever you want to use i'm going to use white here uh, and I'm going to make it bold just so that it stands out better. Should I zoom in a little bit? Yeah, let's zoom in a little bit. So we have our months of the year from January to December, right? But the reason why I put Jan slash Feb is because I identify for... Actually, I'm going to insert here. So this is like I mentioned. Oh, I deleted it. Like I mentioned, this is like a little insert. When I insert it, creates here. So I'm going to cut and paste this here. Uh, paste. Now, the reason why I start from December to January is because I'm using December salary for my January expenses. That's why I've put the slash. Now, in, in column B, you can see I put January slash Feb, meaning my January salary is what I'm using for Feb because I possibly get paid out between 25 to, to 30th of the month, right? Without giving specifics. Um, here, I want to insert something else and I'm going to call this... Okay, so I've added another column on the left side because I want to add another heading here called net income. So I'm teaching you today how to create your own budgeting documents. And then I'm going to I'm going to merge this and I'll probably bring this to the left side. Right? I hope you're seeing what I'm clicking because sometimes my screen recording doesn't show what I'm clicking on. Uh, but I'm, I've aligned it left and I've clicked merge and center. Okay, that's my net income. Shall we make it a 
um what color should we make it pink let's make it pink yeah and then i'm also going to make it bold so that's how you create that and then you want to add everything that comes out of your account but firstly i'm going to add my net income what comes in so let's say uh, i get paid which one should i use this let's say i get paid um i'm gonna go to salary calculator uk let's say i get paid you click on salary calculator okay and agree and close the average salary of business analyst is i'm gonna click on take on pay here sorry i keep going on and off depending on what the page is showing I think average salary is between 40, 45K, something like that, 47, 48K. So let's just put it at 45,000 pounds. Let's say I earn 45,000 pounds per year as a business analyst. And um, so that means my monthly salary should be around 2939. Uh, now I'm a type of person who approximates, <laughs> approximates things. So let's say this is 29. Four zero. My take-home salary per month is two nine four zero. So I'm gonna put here two nine four zero. Add salary. Salary per month is two nine four zero. That's how much comes in. And now I'm gonna click here. You see the plus sign. And I'm gonna drag it all the way to December because every month that's what's coming in. Now maybe you have other types of things that come into your account at the end of the month it could be childcare money it could be some other types of benefits uh and whatnot right so you can add other other salary it could be small business that you have um dividends that come in right so let's just leave that as that and then i'm gonna add a total here total i'll put it in capitals a total will now be let's use click on fx which is equal to sum right and click OK. And we want to do the sum of these three and four. And that's going to give us the sum here. And I'm going to drag it. So that's everything that comes in every month. OK, we've done that. We have our total. I like to make it green. Let's make it green. Uh, make it green. I think this would be a part two video, actually. Yeah, just so. That's my net income. Next, I'm going to add my expenses. OK, what are the various types of expenses that exist? Again, I'm going to merge and center this. Click merge and center and also bring it to the left side. I'm also going to make it pink. What are the different types of expenses that exist? We have living costs, right? Living costs. What other types exist? You have your personal costs uh you also have your loans and debts if you have any loans and debts and that's that so let's just say that's our total our total the total so i'm going to add more rows here i hope you see what i'm doing i'm just right clicking on it and clicking on insert and it's inserting um new rows what are the various living costs that exist living costs could include your rent on this living cost i'm also going to merge and center it and bring it to the left side what color do we want to give you maybe maybe we should just make it blue today i'm teaching you guys an entire different thing but bringing you on to my journey of budgeting really how to budget effectively budget your money what is coming in and what is going out so living costs could be your rent or mortgage i don't know if you have rent or mortgage you want to add that there you want to add your um maybe are you paying for car car payments i don't know okay we we'll put that on that loan council tax gas electric let's add water let's add internet as well mon dieu I'm already feeling anxious because that's a lot of things that is coming out as my regular living expenses. Um, what else? There might be various other things that you have. So we have our total of... I like to leave one line just in case I have any new um, living costs that could come in. I remember we always make our total green. So let's make it green here. I'm going to select the green one. Uh, make it bold. Right, so what's going to be our total? You're going to click here, 
click fx it brings up the sum equals to uh you want to select here so the total of all these that's what's going to display here and i'm going to drag and pull it all the way here so let's say your average out of 2940 uh i don't know let's think about it let's think about it <laughs> what is the average rent income when i lived in london i was paying let's say let's just say it's 600 pounds and now i don't know how real that is right i don't know how real that is council tax let's say it's 98 pounds per month depending on where you are now i'm just going to use uh gas electric water let's say there was one time i was paying like 50 pounds for gas and electric you know so let's just say that like 50 pounds each internet is around 40 pounds depending on where you are i know these figures are not realistic but at one point believe it or not it was realistic for me so i'm giving you figures that are from the past but I think maybe my um, electric was like, uh, I think it was a bit more because I used to put it every month. It's that type of electric that you top up, right? Let's just say 100. So everything together is like 200 internet and all that. So you see how much is coming out my expenses. I'm going to leave one gap in there as well. At this point, I just pause and I'm just going to add a bunch of other things in there so that we save time in the video. Now I'm going to add here, you see, I'm going to sort of make a double bottom line and at the top i'm also going to put one line at the top actually take bottom border with top this one this is good right and i'm going to apply it to these ones as well just to make the template look really nice and um, i wanted to show you guys also how to create this on your own from scratch so you can see how to do it but in order to speed up the video i've had to go and, go and first create that initial setting but I'm going to, don't worry, I'm going to explain it to you. So I hope you can kind of follow. I'm just adding colors, right, to each of these. So I've literally just created that. Now, what I forgot to add is my yearly. What is my yearly total, right? So I'm going to say yearly total. Let's expand this as well. So it goes into that, you see. So I'm going to have to redo all these parts some, somehow. But you get what I mean anyway. So I'm going to add it all up here, add it so that the line extends. That's what happens when you don't do everything at the time you're supposed to do it. Okay, anyway, so you can see how our spreadsheet is coming together, but I know I didn't really show you how I came to all this, but I'm going to walk through it now with you. So our salary is 2940 per month. The yearly, let's change that to, let's change that to a different color. Maybe let's make it um what color can we use let's use yellow <laughs> make it very colorful i'm gonna make this yellow as well make this yellow as well yeah uh make this yellow because i've extended it so i kind of have to manually you see how how much work it takes to create this document so i hope that you guys are finding value because i'm going to share it in the description box as well so you can just access it and change up the numbers add your own numbers and all that into it oh, but yearly how do we know how much when you copy like when you sort of click on this and drag it all the way to november december when you look here you can see your total after tax is twenty five thousand two hundred and eighty. so you want to make sure that that's what is here exactly i'm going to say equals to sum i'm going to click fx on the screen it displays sum i say okay sum of what sum of b3 all the way to m m3 and i click okay and it displays that 35,280. now i'm going to drag it here as well so that the formula drags down because there's nothing here so it's displays as zero um you want to drag it here as well because your total for the year is gonna still be the same so if i drag it down you see that it's three five um two eight zero now that's pretty much the same thing i'm doing here if i drag all these if i copy all these drag it down like that where you see this where the plus sign shows you can drag it all the way and it will automatically populate all the numbers for you as well as all the totals being added okay i'm gonna drag this one here now now for my total because I can't drag all these down, it will display as 000. So I'm going to add another formula. You can literally just copy and paste the formula there. And it comes up as my total is 9600. So if I drag to see that it's correct, it says 9600. And I'm going to drag that down as well. And it makes it 
9600. You just make sure that everything is aligned with regards to color and format and all that. Um, here as well, our total should be what? Um, our total. So that's really the formula that we're using. Our total is 13,656. 13, and I'm going to paste that formula here as well. It's gone off. So what happens with Excel once you've pasted something, um, it clears it off and you have to re recopy and paste again. So that's our total there, right? How did I get this total? So what I'm doing is our salary is 29. Our living costs total is 1138. How did I do that? It's pretty much the same. Add an equal to sign here. You can see this, the formula is displaying sum of B9, right? All the way to B15. So from here to here, we'll give you the total there. And you drag it across. I forgot to add groceries. Did I add that somebody somewhere else? Yes. Um, so that's living cost. I should have added groceries under living cost, really, because groceries is our living cost. Of you see that if I add two hundred here, it will automatically update that figure because I dragged it all the way down initially. I'm gonna drag that down too, and then I'm gonna drag this down. That gives you the total. Okay, so I'm just showing you initial um now delete this because we've already added groceries i'm just showing you initial how to create your budget um documents in excel so i'm going to drag it all the way because i want it all to and i'll continue going to um copy the formula here and paste it and then drag it down that gives me the total Okay, and because we already have the formula here as well, if I drag it that way, it displays. There's no formula here, so I'm going to copy from one of the totals there and paste it. And it gives you the correct one. You can always check it, right? 3900, you check it here, 3900. That's literally what I'm doing on everything. But anyway, when we look at our budget now, you can see we have from January expenses to December expenses. Our salary is 2940. Our living cost total is 11338. Uh, our personal costs such as Spotify, Disney, all those enjoyment things, Netflix, all those things, um, 325. Now I know I put school lunch and this as personal, but I think it should go on that living costs. Um, I can tidy that up later. Um, but all those such things as you know what I'm gonna <laughs> yeah I'm gonna add it here so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut this school lunch from here because it should be our living cost because it's very important it's very important so it automatically pastes and adjusts all the numbers and here you can feel free to add whatever it is you want to add whether it's Netflix or any other sort of stuff you want to add so I'm gonna delete that um, but you can see how our document is coming along really, really well, right? Um, Disney, Spotify, Netflix. How much is Netflix? I don't have a Netflix, so is it £15? I don't know. I'm just assuming it's £15. Um, Prime as well. Is it? Not, I, think, I think it's £10. Or it depends on whether you're doing a family one or whatnot. Right, so I'm literally just adding all these. Let's say you have a car loan of paying 150 per month. I'll advise you not to have car loan. I did that and I regret it. So um, don't get car. Only get things that you are able to pay off. You know that you are able to pay it off. If you can't pay it off, there's no point. There's absolutely no point doing it. But if you have a car loan, try to pay it all off. Um, it's not the best to get on this PCP and HP things. Just buy a 500 pounds car that you can manage. That's what I did at the start um, before I was able to um, afford a better car. But you know, try to live according to your means. If you have a goal for something better that you want to invest your money in, such as buying a house. So what I did, I, I got rid of my car loans. I got rid of my debt. And then I started to save towards... Um, the house okay so that's it with how to do your budgeting we have to create your own budgeting um document within excel literally um using those 
basic formulas, track your expenses, right? What is your net income at a time? what is coming in per month what are your living costs the things that you can't do without that you have to pay for so there's your rent council tax all those things bills electricity transport fare as well add that in there i didn't add that um right add that groceries you can't do without that um and then your personal cost things that you can live without that you can cancel such as spotify disney netflix amazon prime those sort of things and that way you can, when you want to look at your expenses, you can then start to think, hmm, is this important? I want to be able to save towards the house in the next, I don't know, six months. And if I cancel my Spotify for six months, I'll have, what, £90 that can I, I can save. So let me cancel Spotify and just listen to free YouTube music, right? Think about areas that you're able to, to save once that money comes in. Maybe you want to travel on holiday, uh, go to Spain or go to France. You can pay ninety pounds for a flight, even less sometimes, depending on the on the time frame or the period of the year. You can literally pay fifty pounds, forty five pounds to go to France. So maybe you want to look at reducing those experiences. Are very important for you to sort of do some self care, take yourself away from your usual environment, learn new things, right? Experience new cultures, right? Experience is very important. Mm, it's getting late <laughs> it's getting late i hope you're finding value in this video but i thought i'll just do something different i know it's really long but i really really wanted to break it down to you so that you're able to create your own documents um i know that there are a lot of personal budgeting uh templates out there that charge you for it feel free to download this um and change up the numbers and add your own numbers. Everything is already automated in there. You'll also find that a lot of the other budgeting documents will have like graphs and things like that. Don't worry about those things. Your key focus is your monthly expenses and your monthly savings. What's going out? What's coming in? And what are you saving? What are you saving towards, right? Don't worry about all those graph things. It just makes things a bit overwhelming, um, gives you a bit of anxiety. So this is why I do mind just basic, simple, uh, able to track it monthly, able to track it daily. And what I also do is, whenever I'm on my, lap on my laptop, I watch it. I'm able to check and track, <laughs> track my budget and say, okay, I hope I haven't gone outside what I said I'm going to spend this month or outside what I said I'm going to spend in the next week or whatnot, right? Yeah, so it will help you to manage it effectively. So anyway, according to my budgeting, you can see that at the end of every month, I have £217. What what do I want to use it for? What can I use it for? Now, this is not realistic, but at the end of the month, you see what is left. Or if it's on minus, you can then now start to look at my personal costs. Where can I reduce my personal cost? How can I stop buying food outside all the time, ordering food, ordering Chinese, McDonald's? How can I reduce that so that I'm able to remove this from minus to a plus, right? That's just an example. Now, to pay off your debt, try to pay off the, try to look at doing the snowball method. This is something that I got from Dave Ramsey. I'm going to quickly type it in there, Dave Ramsey snowball method. Uh, and what does that say? It helps you to get out of debt with seven steps, I think, I think, seven steps paying off the smallest of all your all your loans as quickly as possible so whatever loan you have try to pay that off first but there are seven steps that i followed first i listed all my debts this is how i got out of debt by the way i listed all my debt from the smallest to la largest at that point it was just oh i had one bank <laughs> bank loan that i took out um which was the smallest so i tried to pay that up off first and make all the minimum payments right pay as much as i could from the smallest debt and then repeat that on the next debt after doing that then i now looked at saving one thousand pounds in rainy day savings so when i showed you on this budgeting template i have rainy day you want to have rainy day of three to six months of your expenses so if you if your total expenses is um total monthly expenses 2123 you want to save at least 6,369 in your rainy day up to 8,492 in this example. So you want to have some sort of rainy day, for instance, some accident could happen, anything could happen that you're, you haven't predicted for so that you have money. It will give you a bit of security. Right? So I paid, I, I made sure I saved towards that. 
um, and then start to save towards other expensive things. Start to invest. Look at stocks and shares ISAs. Um, on that, you can save up to twenty thousand per year. Um, so just try to save into that uh, and invest. Make investments. Uh, I'm not really able to share much because I'm also a learner on that. Uh, and then maybe have a regular saver somewhere. I generally have a regular saver that I have to save towards holidays because <laughs> I enjoy going on holidays. So I know that every month this amount comes out of my account and I know that at the end of the year I have this amount of money for my holiday for the next year. So that's what I do, but it depends on what you want to use a regular saver for. You might want to, at the end of the year, put it towards your rainy day, whatever you think you want to use it for. But... Anyway, what I'm trying to say is how to manage your, in effect, how to manage your personal um, expenses, personal finance as a business analyst is first by creating a budget, understanding what's going in, what's coming out, understanding what debts you have and trying to clear those debts. And the next step is saving towards your rainy day and then everything else will start to come into place. But well, that's it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know it's a bit longer than usual. I recorded all the way through to it getting dark. It's actually dark now outside. But yeah, that's it for today. If you like today's video, please like, subscribe and share this content. You never know who it might help. And as always, I'll see you in my next one. Peace.